Welcome back to day number 15 of my 31 days of Halloween theme drawing tutorials. The month's almost half over, so we still got a lot of stuff to cover. But today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can draw this cool dripping tentacle design from start to finish. No time lapse, no cuts, it's all in real time. So if you wanna draw along with me, keep watching. All right guys, so let's draw a tentacle. Starting out, I'm using a 4,000 by 4,000 300 DPI canvas. I'm gonna start out my sketch with my HB pencil. This is part of my pencil set. And for my color palette, once again, I've got this already created and you can download this color palette for free. If you just go to my website, bjdell.com, go to the YouTube reference materials section on there and you can save this as a JPEG. I'll also link it in the description below. But once you have it saved to a JPEG on your camera roll, just go up to your wrench icon, go to add, insert a photo. It's gonna bring it in as a separate layer and then you can just long press each of the colors as we go through the tutorial. So let's start. First thing I'm gonna do, just go to black here just to start out my sketch. And like I said, gonna be a tentacle. So I'm just gonna kind of bring it coming out of the side here bring it up and around, have it kind of curve back in like this. And then kind of bring around the outside portion next. Kind of want to make it a little bit thinner here towards that tip and then just kind of bring it out a little bit wider as it comes back down and around. go and I'm gonna have it kind of come back in on itself so the inside section is gonna disappear here and then come back around down here I'll just pull this down it's just got this nice curved flow to it I'm pulling here a little bit tighter so we can get this next section in like I said, it's just going to come back in on itself like this. Kind of probably pull in, make that round at the top and kind of have some overlapping parts here. So there's the basic shape of the tentacle. Let's go ahead and add in the suckers then. So we'll just draw some ovals here. We have the back section kind of coming around so it's a little three-dimensional and then that inner sucker part right there another one here and they're gonna be smaller as they go up back section and the little sucker part here make sure I get those space pretty good and the sucker that a little bit closer to the front there. One more up here. You'll see I'm just going in really loose with the sketch just like always. The sketch is going to be more of just a guide and a suggestion where everything goes so I don't get too caught up on making sure everything's perfect. So you got one there. I think this one since it's where that kind of squares off and comes behind. This one's gonna be more of the side view there. So it's gonna look a little bit different than those others. Do one more here. And then one more here on the edge. I think that looks pretty good there. I'm gonna go ahead and draw some, just some spots around here too. And get some of these different spots will allow us to do different colors in here too and kind of add a little bit more of a fun kind of pattern and texture going on here. And he's just going in really random with these, so feel free to do this however you so desire. You don't have to follow along with this part perfect by any means. Just gonna bring these around down here to the front. So there we go kind of have some lines here separating those sections. 
like that. And then we have some drips coming down in here. Got an idea for the background already and these drips are gonna kind of play into that. We'll talk more about that here in a second. So there we go. Anything else? I think that looks pretty good. So we can go ahead and start to actually do our inking now. So to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and go up to my layers and I'm going to hit the blend mode here and drop down this. So we're dropping the opacity. We just wanna see it a little bit, not super dark. And once we've got that set, we're gonna make a new layer. So this is gonna be the layer that our inks are on, this top layer two. And for my inks, I'm gonna go ahead and switch my brush to my standard inker streamline. This is part of my cartooning brush set. So we'll use that. And then I think before we start for the light source, we're gonna have it kind of coming in from this up here. So I've talked about before with inking and light sources, uh, basically anything towards the light source is gonna have a lighter line weight, it's gonna be thinner. Anything towards the back is gonna be the shadowed area, it's gonna have a little bit of a thicker line. So now that we've got that decided, let's go ahead and start to ink. I'm gonna switch my color here. I'm not gonna do black outlines. I've got this really dark green color right here, which is gonna kind of play into the rest of the color palette. So that's what we're gonna use for the inks. And then I'm just gonna get started. I'm gonna make sure I've got my brush the right size here. And like I said, light source coming in here, this back here is gonna be a little bit thicker and thin out as it comes around. Get the first line in there, maybe bring it up a little bit closer here to where it starts to come in. My brush, or for my eraser, I just want to make sure I got the eraser set as the same brush. So there we go. Let's go ahead now and do this inside section. So we're going to bring this down and around and back up. I'm gonna have that a little bit thinner of a line weight, just since it's in the inside. Get thicker there towards the bottom. So there we go. Let's go ahead and connect these together. We wanna to make sure these are connected just so when we go in and start filling in the colors, we don't have any gaps, so that way we can color drop these. Pull back out here, so there we go. Let's go ahead then and pull this line down and around. I want that one to be a little bit thicker just because it is the outline. Not too thick though because it is going to be towards that light source a little bit more. I'm going to do it one more time here. I want to bring it out a little bit farther here at the bottom. A little bit too far on that one. I do want to have that... There we go, that line in there, that sucker right there, it's gonna kinda overlap. So there we go, let's go ahead and get these in here. And I'm just going over top of that circle here just because I'm gonna go back in here in a second with another layer like I've talked about before to do the eraser section so that we don't have to worry about overlapping areas that'll all make sense shortly if you guys haven't watched the previous videos where i've talked about that that looks good let's wait a second here for the circles because we're going to switch layers so i'm going to go ahead and do these drips here and once again you can see i'm just using those sketch lines as a suggestion i'm not trying to trace these i'm just keeping it really loose and just kind of going in the general area where i've got them i'm not really worried about following them 100 percent i'm just going to draw some other drip areas like this so that's going to be basically blank right there it's going to let the background show through those. And then we'll just pull out some thin lines here just to kind of show the motion of that drip coming down. And this we gotta be careful. We don't wanna hit the edges, we just wanna get it there in the center. 
When you got really tight areas like that, it's best to zoom in so you can get really close to make sure they come in like they're supposed to. So there we go. And let me pull this one around too here. And if you don't like the taper at the end, if you don't let up soon enough, you can always go back in and erase to clean up the taper. All right, so there we go. We've got that done. Let's go ahead and do the spots around here now. And this, I'm going to drop the line weight of this because I want these to be a lot thinner and I don't want to have to worry too much about my pressure here. So by dropping this smaller than our previous one, it'll kind of help us make sure that these aren't too big. Bring these around. And once again here, and you can see not really caring too much about everything matching up to my sketch, just the general area. Sometimes drawing shapes like this is kind of hard to get the lines to match up. So you might have to go back in and do some erasing like that so it doesn't look too wonky. I kind of want this to be the, the same line weight coming around. So those on the edge are a lot easier because you're not connecting the shape. So a little bit more forgiving there. And this is just a repeat process around. This is where I guess I could time lapse the video, but this also kind of gives you a chance to catch up if you are following along and are maybe a little bit behind. A little wiggle there at the end. And just a couple more here. All right, so there we go. We've got all those around there. Let's go ahead now and we're gonna go up to our layers and we're gonna make a new layer. And this is gonna be the circles or the ovals for the suckers here. And we're doing this on a separate layer because we've got that overlap here. Rather than trying to erase this after we're done with it, this makes it a lot easier because we can go back in on that bottom layer and erase. So let's go ahead and start that. Just gonna kind of let that go and lock in. So we got some perfect ovals there. Going a little bit heavier there in the back. Same thing here, going a little bit heavier at the top here because of the way the shadow is going to fall. And this, I'm going to have to pull this line a little bit more down there. So I'm going to switch back there to that layer. Just pull that a tad bit right there. Switching back then to my ovals. And one last one here. All right, so now that I've got those in there, I'm gonna go around the back side. This one looks a little bit thick though. So I'm gonna go in real quick and redo that one. All right, so now I'm gonna go inside and do the back side of these to make them look a little bit more three-dimensional. I'm gonna pull this one back a little bit further. So to do this, just basically zooming in and just tapering this line around here to give that three-dimensional look to it. And these, we want these lines to be a little bit thinner than the rest. So 
So here, if you want to, to do the thinner lines, if you want to adjust your brush size, you can, or if you just want to just not press as hard, whatever you feel comfortable with. And then we've got to get this one. I forgot about that one. Make my size a little bit bigger. Just a little line there. Okay. All right. So we've got those. Let's go ahead and go in here and let's erase. So we're going back down to layer two, our main inks. We're going to go and erase this overlapping. We're just going to get all of these. Bring that down a little bit in size so I can get in here a little tighter. All right, there we go. So now we can go in and do the sucker parts next. So I'm going to go back then to this layer. It doesn't really matter now that we're not doing any overlaps here. We don't really have to worry about what layer we're on. We could even merge them at this point. And I'll just keep it there for now. And with this, I'm just using kind of a tapered line thicker in the back and then tapered towards the front here. And then another line here in the center like that. With this, it should be the way that the perspective is going. It should be a little bit closer here towards the front. You should have a little bit more space back here. So keep that in mind as you're doing these just to keep your perspective in check just like that. Like so. And just repeating this around the rest of them. Some extra lines in there for details. Starting to thin out my lines now as these get smaller. last one come back and that's what we're left with so I think that looks pretty good I'm gonna draw the drips now coming down from these since we've got those suckers in there finally so I'm just making kind of quick motions here so they have just a good flow to them want it to be kind of organic and have those line weight changes there I think that looks good. Let's go ahead and add in the lines in between the suckers now. So once again, we want these to be thinner here. So if you want to adjust down there, oops. And that's it. Now I'm going to go back up to my brush. I'm going to go to my standard anchor now, and I'm just going to pull in some extra lines here for details. I use just the regular standard anchor, not the streamline for this, just so I can get some really natural tapers, have a little bit more control over where the lines go, and it's not trying to correct itself. Just makes it a little bit easier for quick lines like this. Pulling these around. A couple more down here. And maybe just a tad bit more there. All right, so that looks pretty good. I think now I'm just going to go in here and just add some dots around just for a little extra pattern and kind of cartoon texture. Once again, with these, just kind of haphazard wherever, just different sizes. And with this, I'm just pressing harder 
on certain ones. It's one of the great things about the pressure sensitivity of these brushes combined with the pressure sensitivity of the Apple Pencil. Just get a lot of different sizes just by the pressure. Draw a couple more little lines here in the inside. There we go. So let's go ahead and turn off our sketch layer now. And that's what we're left with for our inks. So now that we've got those done, one thing I do want to change, see this one's a little bit thick. So I'm going to go back in and do that one real quick. If I see stuff like this, I kind of like to go in and change it before I go in and do my colors. So that's one thing I'll do is I'll pull out at the last second there just to kind of see, okay, what are we left with right now? Is there anything I need to change? Just because once you start laying in these colors, then it's kind of a pain to go back in and you're going to have to go back and fill in areas that wasn't there to begin with once we use the reference layer. So there we go. We've got the inks done. Let's go ahead and merge these layers together now. So you can pinch those together or if you go up there, you can go to merge down and those become one layer. So now let's do the colors. So starting out, let's go ahead and go down to this layer one. Let's make a new layer and we're gonna set our colors or our lines here as reference. So this is gonna allow us to drag and drop the colors down here. Makes it super easy, super quick. So I'm gonna go back up to my color palette. I'm gonna choose this first green here and or I guess the second green because technically the first one was green and we need to set that to reference going back in here just dragging and dropping in and if you zoom in you want to make sure that these go to the edge if you've got like a white gap your color thresholds not turned up high enough so if you just play with this until it gets to the place where it fills in everything and then drop it down that's where you want to be at so we got that, let's go ahead and go to this lighter green. This is gonna be the inside section, the underneath part of the tentacle. Get that little part right there just by hand. Got all those filled in. So let's go ahead next, we've got the purple. Now, initially when I had the 5X beta, they took the recolor out. Uh, they didn't have a replacement. They had color fill in here, but it didn't work the same way with reference. Since they didn't update, color fill actually works now with reference. So there is the recolor method available now with Procreate 5X. If you watched my previous video where I did the octopus and did the quick color fill that way using recolor, it works now, it's just not called recolor. So what you need to do to do this, if you go up to your selection tool here, you wanna to go to automatic and then color fill, and then you can just drop in these colors. Once again, you need to make sure that your color drop threshold is turned up on this. So once we drop this in, I'm gonna slide it all the way to the right, but not too far to where it fills in everything. And usually you would go in and fill like this and color drop, but with this method, it makes it so much easier as long as you don't press other stuff. <laughs> if you happen to do that and you undo, it's gonna knock out that selection. So you'll have to go back in there and hit that again. But you can see how fast this is. I was really disappointed when they took out recolor and I thought that this would work at the time it didn't with the beta or with the first release that came out. But now with the, I think they added an extra update and it does work now. So kudos to the team. And you'll see if you still got the selection tool turned on and you switch colors, it's going to change everything. So when you go to switch another color, you just want to go to a layer or brush or whatever to clear out the selection. And then you want to go back into selection. And then you can go into your colors here and you can start doing this once again. So just make sure you always switch off that selection tool before you change to the other color. And make sure you don't click your lines. So there we go. I'm gonna switch colors now, so I'm gonna hit my brush, go back in, change to this darker, 
go back into my selection tool and start going around again on the back side with this darker color. All right, so we've got those filled in. Let's go ahead now and do those drips coming down. So for that, I've got this super light blue here to the side, but you see, I totally forgot to do that and change off like I just said. <laughs> so we'll hit that color again, go back up and just hit one of these. Select that blue again, go to the selection and start knocking those back in. All right, so there we go. We've got our color flats done. Super quick, super easy. Love that they added that back in. So let's go ahead and start our shadows and highlights now. Like I said, I got the light source coming in here, so this back is gonna be where more of the shadows are. So let's go ahead and make a new layer. And I'm gonna turn off reference now. And with this new layer, this is gonna be our shadows. We're gonna set this to clipping mask. This allows us to color on a separate layer, but it sticks to whatever we've got on this layer. So it won't go outside. Uh, for the shadow color, I've got this really dark midnight blue here. And let me show you, I'm gonna switch. Uh, I'm already on my standard anchor, that's what I want. So you'll see here, no color is showing up until we start hitting what's colored in on that bottom layer. That's what clipping mask is for. So let's start knocking in these shadows. So I've talked about this before. I start really dark and then kind of go in and adjust the opacity later, but I want to get a big section filled in. One thing I am going to change with this, do a little bit differently than I usually do, is I want this to have a little bit more texture to the shadows and the highlights. So I'm going to switch over to an actual uh, Procreate default brush. It is part of, let's see, part of organic and it's this reed brush. So this is gonna give, you'll see here, it's got a kind of gnarly edge to it, and I kind of look like the look of that for this design. So we're just gonna go ahead and pull in some big shadow areas with that brush. And as this comes down, I'm gonna kind of curve it back up and around here. And then if you go into erase using this, you also need to switch over to the same brush for your eraser. So organic and then read. If you need to pull out stuff here, make sure you're on the same brush when you pull out. It makes it a lot easier and it keeps that texture that we're going for. Pull this in here. And then I'm gonna get some around here to the front too, just so I can see on this color, what we're working with. Drop the size just a tad bit. That's good. Get the rest of this filled in and then I'll adjust the opacity to see where we're at. Not worry too much about going over the edges here because I will fix that in a second. And then I'll do this here too, just so we can see what it looks like on that color. Okay, so now that we've got that laid in, let's go up to our layers here. Our blend mode, we're gonna drop this down to see where we want it at. And I think probably about 33% looks pretty good there. And then I'm just gonna kind of start working some more on here. I kind of want to drop this a little bit further. I've got it coming out a little bit too much here on the side or towards the front. And then for closer parts like this, you're probably gonna have to drop the size down a little bit so you're not too big there. see that texture that it gives. I just kind of like that for this design. It looks kind of cool. And we'll just continue to bring these up and around.
my stomach is growling. I had breakfast this morning, but I guess I didn't eat enough breakfast. It was omelets day. I've become a master omelet chef, so we end up doing omelets usually about oh two, three times a week. Makes it nice when you've got BLTs the night before and then you've got leftover bacon because you don't have to spend forever cooking bacon. You can just throw it in the microwave and make it super quick. It's around here. And we're going to have a little bit heavier here because the way that the shadow here comes in, it's going to be pretty heavy from that top coming down and kind of hiding part of that shadow was. It's got that heavy overlap. There's a lot of weight there, so I'm bringing some shadows around this now too. See, I just like the look of that texture there. I think it's super cool. And this one I know is going to be a longer tutorial, so hopefully you guys are hanging in there. This one might even surpass uh, Mr. Vampire from the other day. I know people said that that one was a uh, pretty challenging one, so this one might be that level too, especially with all these curves and circles and ovals and everything else. So I really can't wait to see what you guys come up with, though, for a design based on this one. You'll see here, the way I'm doing these curves, I'm just kind of following around. I've talked about this before, once again, uh, just how the lines that I've already got there flow. It just kind of goes along with that same curve of the lines. That. Go ahead and get in here. Get the inside parts of the suckers that I missed from going around. So I want this to kind of flow a little bit better with the shape of that oval. This one will pull one in here too, a little bit around. And you can see there, got a little bit of a white gap. So I'm going to fill that back in. I'm going to go back then to my shadows and continue to go here. So there we go. I think that's pretty good for the shadows on that section. I need some down here, though, the way that that has kind of weight to it, and the light source is going to give off a shadow there, and then also down here around the bottom of this water dripping off or slime, whatever you want to call this. We'll draw some shadows there, too, just to give this some more details and stuff. And same thing around here. We have the shadow that the, the actual sucker gives off here. And then we can drop some shadows there in the back too. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and start the uh, highlights now. So to do this, let's go ahead and go up to our layers. We're gonna make a new layer. And once again, we're gonna set this to clipping mask. Going back up to my color palette here. I'm gonna start with this yellow first. And we're just going to knock in a big portion of the highlights around this top part here. Once again, just getting a big area in, and then I'll go ahead and adjust the opacity here in a second. Got that. Maybe have another one come here. We got a couple areas filled in here. All right, so now I can go ahead, go up to my layers again, go to my blend mode and drop the opacity. And I'm thinking probably about 50% looks pretty good. So we got a nice highlight going on there. And then going back into my brush, I'm gonna go around the fronts of these, gonna get some highlights in around here to change those colors.
couple of just oval highlights there. Kind of give off a glare and a shine. A couple more here. Leave some there. Some here around this front. I'm going to erase that shadow that's overlapping there. Going back to my highlights now. Some around that front part there. More here around the front. And same thing with these. All right, I think that looks good. So now we're gonna go ahead, go back up to our color palette. We're gonna go to white, and then we're gonna use this for the front of the suckers here. following the way that those curve down and around. And this one needs a really heavy shadow, so I need to go back in there and just fill pretty much that whole thing in with the shadow there. All right, so there we go. Let's see, anything else? Maybe with the white selected again, and on our highlights, just adding in a couple of the round or oval highlights here that just kind of show those, kind of have that gleam to them. And I think that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead next and work on a background for this. So for this, let's go ahead down to the bottom layer, layer one that's turned off. That's our sketch layer. We're just going to make a new layer. And then I'm going to go up here to my color palette. I've got this. Uh, basically, I want to do a frame first. So I want to go to this green here, that first one that we use for the outline. And we're just going to go ahead and drop this in behind it. Then we're going to go up to our arrow and uniform selected. We're just going to bring this in towards the center. Just like that. And now we're going to go ahead and slide that to the left and we're going to duplicate it. And then we're going to fill that in with white. So if we go back up to our color palette, grab our white, drop it in. See, it disappears, but we're going to shrink it down now, so it's going to work like a frame. So once again, going back up to our arrow and bringing this in. Just basically want that to lock to make sure that we've got a frame that's the same width all the way around. That line is the same width from corner to corner, side to side. So now that we've got that, let's actually start painting in our background. So I'm going to do it all on layer six. And I'm going to set this as uh, alpha lock. We're going to draw directly on this layer. For my color, I'm going to go back up here to my color palette and choose the blue. And then for my brush, I'm going to drop down to water. And I want to use the wet sponge. Kind of want this to look like a rainy sky sea type of thing. So with that selected then, we're just going to go in here and start to do this blue in here. And you'll see how that water works. It really has that cool look to it to where you've got different areas that are going to be different as far as the, the value goes. And then if you want to do even more, you can go back in with white and add some white around there too, just to make it look even more splotchy. Switching back to blue to get some darker areas in there. However you want to do it to make it look like you want. We kind of got that painterly look going on. So now that we've got that, let's make it look like it's raining. And I got to give a shout out for this part. I'm going to try this. Uh, I just ordered a new print from Scotty Young. If you guys don't know Scotty, he's a comic book artist, does a ton of stuff. 
for Marvel. He's got his own book on Image Comics. And if you don't know who he is, check him out. He's got a new YouTube channel. Or not, I guess, new. He's just doing a lot more on YouTube. And I'll link that down in the description below. But he just released a new print the other day of uh, It Themed. And it had Georgie kneeling down by the sewer. And it's raining. And it's kind of got the rain popping off Georgie's coat. And I kind of want to do the same thing for this. And I want to see if we can do it and make it look good. So we're going to try it and see. Uh, I do think, though, we need to switch. Let's switch our colors. And we need to switch our brush. So I'm going to go back in to my brush. Uh, I'm going to use that same reed for this. I think this will work well. So we're going to use that. And I'm going to go ahead and do a new layer. And we're going to clipping mask this. So... I'm going to just kind of start pulling some rain lines down. And I like this reed for this just because it has like a really cool way that it falls off if you don't press the same from top to bottom. And you'll see it kind of breaks there. And that's that kind of rain look that I'm going for. It just works really well. And get a bunch of rain lines down here. I'm kind of overlapping in certain areas, like it's really blowing. You got rain coming from different directions. Just kind of some more broken ones here. I kind of want some thicker ones, some thinner ones. And it's going to be thicker at the top, and then that taper and that break is going to come in towards the bottom, of course. So you've got those. Now let's make it look like it's actually popping off of here. And that's one thing that Scotty did with that piece that I thought was really, really cool. So let's try to get that to work. So where the rain's coming down here, it's going to kind of give off these little lines and puddles around here. And then... It's going to, of course, bounce as it hits. So we're going to have smaller lines coming back up as it bounces. So it's going to almost have like these little motion lines. And then maybe some like little dots coming off as well. Stuff like that. We can bring this up around. We'll do some more lines down here to come down as they hit. And with these, you're going to have that thicker part at the bottom because as they bounce, then they're going to taper off and up. So that gives that sense of motion there. A couple more dots around here. These up here is going to be a little harder to see because we've got this pretty light up here. Looks cool. So far, so good. But yeah, definitely go check Scotty out if you have not heard of him. He's known for, uh, I'm sure you guys have probably seen his work without knowing it, just because uh, he does the baby Marvel characters. A lot of the variant covers and even if you're not into comics if you've seen you know stuff for sale there's a whole line of figures based around that from general giant uh it's on t-shirts mugs i mean just <laughs> all kinds of crazy stuff that i'm sure you've probably seen we'll bring some of this down here and around too because we've got that water that's going to kind of fall off of this stuff dripping down too See, I'm just drawing those tapered lines down to kind of show that motion like it's dripping. All right, 
So there's that. I'm going to do just a little bit more right here on this one. Bring these out a little bit further. All right, and I think we're good. So I'm gonna go up here, grab that color that I started inking with, grab my cartooning brush, and sign the finished piece. Fourteen. I'm thinking what day it was yesterday. <laughs> I'm like, as I'm doing this, I'm like, okay, so I did 14 yesterday. That means today's 15. So there we go. A finished tentacle piece uh, for Halloween day 15, not 14, not 15, not 20 or yeah, 15, not 20. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That way you can get alerted when I post new videos. I'm going to keep working on this too and just erase some stuff here. Uh, that way you can get alerted when I post new videos, just like the rest of the ones in this series. Today is day 15. So we've got 16 through 31 still coming up. So you don't want to miss out on those. Uh, so make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. Uh, also, if you guys take part in these challenges and you post your designs online to either Instagram or Twitter, I want to see them. So if you do that, make sure you tag me at BJ Dell on either of those two, or you can also post them online with Facebook. I've got a group over there for artists. It's called Keep Creating, a group for artists by artists, a place where you can post your art, give feedback, get feedback, meet new friends, and it's an awesome place to be. I want you guys to be a part of it and you can post your designs based on these. Uh, and then for me, bjdell.com, you can find me there as well as the podcast, Make Money With Your Art. And that's it for day 15. I will be back tomorrow and write the right date on my signature. Will you join me? I hope so. So until next time, keep creating.